dramatic start, a title about Armageddon, and then a park in Felixstowe. What on earth is the connection? Well, the connection is Felixstowe's most famous son, Edmund Allenby. Our story starts in 1862, when a well-off family bought a house in Felixstowe as a summer residence. The house was actually called Felixstowe House, and it was at the top end of Brook Lane. The current town of Felixstowe, to all extents and purposes, didn't exist. There was only the hamlet of Felixstowe based around St Peter's and St Paul's Church. Felixstowe House was amongst the fields, a few minutes walk down Brook Lane to the beach. Felixstowe House was bought by Heinemann and Catherine Allenby. Heinemann Allenby was a well-off country gentleman and his eldest son Edmund was a year old when the family arrived in Felixstowe. Young Edmund spent many happy summers in Felixstowe doing all the kinds of things that were expected of a young, well-heeled gentleman. Lots of hunting, shooting and fishing. But tragedy struck in 1878 when Heinemann Allenby died. The family moved permanently to Felixstowe. Edmund's mother, a true matriarch, ensured that he was encouraged in all the skills she felt were important in life. In particular, she helped nurture in Edmund a strong Christian faith, a factor that was to be critical in later life. Edmund was sent in his teens to Haleybury College near Harford with the intention he would join the Indian Civil Service. But he failed the exams and his more physical skills encouraged him to join the army as a cavalry officer. His skills in leadership were soon recognised and he had two tours of duty in South Africa and a spell at the Army's Staff College in Camberley where he developed a rivalry with his fellow classmate Douglas Haig. The two men's paths would cross dramatically in later years. Allenby saw action during the Boer War and the First World War where his skill as a leader was truly recognised and he rose to the rank of general and earned himself a knighthood for his leadership on the Western Front. He had the reputation of being hard but fair and his nickname was The Bull. Allenby was a cavalry officer. His training and experience was in open warfare, not the trench warfare of the First World War. Although he adapted, he didn't altogether approve of tactics used by senior officers, particularly the Army Commander-in-Chief, his old rival now, Field Marshal Douglas Haig. They didn't get on. This came to a head in 1917 when Prime Minister David Lloyd George stepped in and removed Allenby from France and sent him to Egypt as commander of the British Expeditionary Force there. Allenby was incensed by what he saw as a demotion but soon found that Lloyd George's decision was an inspired one. He was tasked with engaging the Turks and removing them from Palestine. Unlike France, the Terrian was ideal for the mobile warfare Allenby as a cavalryman preferred. His men found him inspirational and the army slowly pushed the Turks northwards towards Jerusalem in the latter part of 1917. The object was to take Jerusalem by Christmas. But how were they going to dislodge the Turks without laying waste to one of the world's most historic cities? For someone like Allenby, a devout Christian, destroying Jerusalem was something he felt he just shouldn't do. And besides, it's also said that he didn't really want to bring the destruction and carnage of the Western Front to the theatre of war for which he was responsible. He needn't have worried, because as Allenby's army advanced on Jerusalem, along with T.E. Lawrence's Arab army, the Turks fled northwards, leaving the city undefended. The city was saved destruction, and Allenby joined the ranks of other great generals to have taken one of the most historic cities in the world. However, Allenby didn't see it that way. His Christian faith led him to decide to enter the city in humility. Jesus entered Jerusalem on a donkey. Allenby could have rode in too on his cavalry horse, but he decided to walk in. His first edict as military governor was to insist that the sites and holy places of the three great religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, be respected. Having taken Jerusalem, Allenby now put his mind to engaging the Turks, but was infuriated to find that half his army was recalled to make up losses on the Western Front. He got fresh but raw reinforcements from Australia, New Zealand and India, but he had to train them. By August 1918, Allenby was ready for a new offensive on the Turks. He engaged them at Megiddo in the north of Palestine. 
Historically, it was the last great battle that the British Army would ever fight using mounted cavalry. The Turks were routed and pushed rapidly northwards through Syria and back into Turkey. Allenby returned from war a national hero and was promoted to Field Marshal. His link to Felixstowe was broken in 1922 when his mother died. The family decided to demolish Felixstowe House and new houses were built on the site. However, the gardens were retained as a public park, Allenby Park, in honour of Felixstowe's most famous son. Allenby himself was awarded a peerage in 1919 in recognition of his war service. He is most remembered for his liberation of Jerusalem, but for Allenby himself, the victory at Megiddo was his finest hour. He became Viscount Allenby of Megiddo and also of Felixstowe in the county of Suffolk. Megiddo was already a famous place before Allenby ever arrived. The open plains around the hill fortress of Megiddo had been the site of several ancient battles. Now the Battle of Megiddo 1918, led by General Sir Edmund Allenby, was added to the list. Megiddo is an important place as far as Bible prophecy is concerned. It's known in the Book of Revelation as Armageddon, the hill of Megiddo. And Armageddon has become a word synonymous with the end of the world. There's been films and books and even computer games made about Armageddon. In Revelation, it's at Armageddon where the forces of the great world powers under a leader the Bible calls the Antichrist will meet for battle and be totally beaten by God's armies led by a returning Jesus Christ. It'll be a final battle after which the world will become fully and materially under the rule of Jesus. Now, if you're not religious, this might sound to you like a load of old nonsense. But the challenge of it is that another part of Allenby's story is also foretold in Bible prophecy. It was something that in 1900 years had been deemed inconceivable, impossible, fanciful nonsense. And that was the restoration of Israel as a sovereign state. Allenby's offensive to remove the Turks from Palestine in late 1917 coincided with the Balfour Declaration which promised a homeland for the Jews and reflected the Zionist aspiration of Jews persecuted in Europe. Even up until 1917, few saw it realistic. That said, nothing much was done during the British mandate in Palestine, but with the Holocaust during the Second World War, the pressure to found a Jewish state in Palestine became strong. The restoration of Israel as a sovereign power is prophesied in the Bible. Both Jews and Christians recognize it as something that was due to happen before end times came. The restored Israel is also prophesied as being unpopular with its neighbors, its existence always under threat. Sound familiar? Is prophecy nonsense? Well, if some of it starts to become true, then you've got to start asking yourself the question, well, is the rest of it true as well? If Jesus is going to come back, then what? Jesus said that he'd return like a thief in the night, so be prepared for it. To the world in general, his return is going to be a complete surprise. But those expecting him can be prepared. We never know when a burglar is going to have a go at thieving from us. But if you think we might be burgled, we can be prepared. Keep windows and doors locked. Install security lights. Or an alarm, maybe. The idea is, we don't know for sure when Jesus is going to return other than he is. We need to be ready for him. There is much about the present world power play that resonates with what we call end times Bible prophecy. Is Jesus coming soon? I can't tell you when for sure because we're not told precisely when. Only read the signs of the times and be ready. So are you ready? Jesus died to bring us into relationship with God and for Christians we have the expectation and hope that the return of Jesus will be a joyful occasion. So here we are in a quiet park in Felixstowe. But from here, Armageddon. Thanks for listening and may God bless you.